GoPro has just made their big announcement for the GoPro Hero 8. Yeah, so it comes out and starts shipping online on October 15th and it will be in retail stores on October 20th. So we can't wait to get our hands on ours. That is right. So let's uh, go over what is new because it actually is a lot. Number one is it is indeed modular like it was speculated and some of the leaked images were showing. So you do now have the ability to extend the GoPro and there are now three modules. There's a base media module. There's a display module and there's a light module. From what I can read, only the light module is waterproof, so it's really questionable if the rest of the module is indeed waterproof. I'm going to guess no, at least for this first iteration of it. But I like the idea. It is really leading to our next point. It is expanding on catering to vloggers. That's true. It looks like we just released GoPro has finally embraced the fact that so many people like us use it for vlogging. This is great news for us and is really well suited for our channel and what we do. So. What is happening now is that GoPro is finally going to give you what you need in the media module for vlogging and you can plug in your microphone, even it comes with a microphone as well, so it mm -hmm. will support external and then it will have the ability to have a screen so you can finally see yourself when you're vlogging with a GoPro and it has a light which is also what you very much need. And one cool thing about the light is that it's uh, waterproof so you can actually go underwater where if you have done any water videography or photography, you really need extra light to make the color come out, otherwise all you get is blue. Yeah, so we're going to be really curious to test out that GoPro light in comparison to the Elytra Torch and our Loom Cube. So stay tuned for those reviews, we'll be doing lots of them. The next big thing is that what they have done is they have improved on the already amazingly good features, the Hyper Smooth and the Time Warp, which is a hyperlapse feature. Mm -hmm. So now they have even more upgraded them and Time Warp in particular gives you the ability to in-camera switch the effect on and off so you have normal speed in between the sped up parts which is really really helpful mm -hmm. if you are wanting to transition between things. Uh, for videographers that is really powerful. Some other news are that they have um, given you more ability to slow down time so from mm -hmm. 120 frames per second it goes to 240 and you are still limited and you cannot go to slow motion in 4K, which to me is not uh, very important. I, I don't really care to go that slow, but for people that do hardcore action shooting, that matters. I hope in, in the near future we do get 4K slow-mo because that's really to us the holy grail. Yeah, although but, no one else is doing that right now. So, no. <laughs> so we can't blame GoPro for yeah. not having it because no, no one else does. No, not yet. Um, another news is that apparently they no longer let you remove the screen from the lenses mm. which is not that much of a good news because it will prevent us from mounting nice filters like we're currently doing and it opens the question what about ND filters when it's too bright out. Yeah, and it sounds like GoPro's not making their own solutions to that, but on the flip side, I think brands like Polar Pro are going to come out with some solutions, hopefully, and some other third-party brands, so we'll just have to keep an eye out for those. Or maybe there's a built-in feature on the GoPro to combat that, I don't know. But one of the things about their new lens is that it's a lot tougher, so it's harder to break, which we've already cracked this default lens on it, so that's actually a really good thing. All right, so another key thing about the new GoPro Hero 8 is the fact that you no longer need the house to mount it onto a tripod or other accessories. That is big and it is enabling because um, taking things in and out of the house was a pain all the time. But actually together with this change, they've moved around the ports and you no longer have to remove everything to be able to change the card or the battery, it sounds like. Yeah, so instead of the house, there's now these folding fingers that come out from the bottom of the GoPro and allow you to extend them out that way. And so by doing that, they had to relocate where the battery door and the SD card slot were, so they're now on the side of the GoPro, which is gonna be an in interesting change, but it does make it easier for changing SD cards and batteries. Speaking of that too, I understand it's still the same GoPro battery so that's the thing about these mods is that if these mods are going to be powered by the GoPro, then that may not be a good thing because battery life still, un unless the battery life has really been changed, it's still not going to be very great. So it looks like another feature that GoPro is pushing now is called digital lenses, which really seems like an enhancement of what they used to do before by letting you change the focal length inside the GoPro, but it truly only was actually cropping. So you were losing the 4K quality. It is still unclear what exactly they mean when they say digital lenses but i would be surprised if they actually maintain the high quality 
uh, when you're using those other focal lengths. So basically what that means in previous versions, at least on the Hero 7, is that you can shoot from like super wide to wide, so it was slightly less distorted, or going into linear mode, which removes almost all the distortion. But the issue with that is that if you wanted to shoot in linear mode, which you know was the one without with the least distortion, you couldn't do that in 4K, you were limited to 1080. So I'm not sure if that's still going to be the case on the Hero 8, but it most likely is. But they are also adding another um, focal length called narrow. The biggest thing that GoPro has done with this release is fill the need which until now third party accessories had to fill because you know you had to get an extra cage, you had to get an extra light, you had to get an extra microphone. Yeah, we were always wondering about that. We were like, huh, these brands like Ulanzi are solving these problems that GoPro isn't doing. And so it'll be really interesting to see how people embrace that because they are coming at a slightly higher price point, but hopefully because they're made by GoPro, then they come at a higher quality. But That's that is right. still a big question mark. Yeah, and it is a smart move for GoPro to actually manufacture all the things that you need to extend their camera. And if people choose so, they can buy it from them now, unless being forced to go to third party. And sometimes it's not great quality, sometimes it's not a great match. At least mm -hmm. now you know what you're getting is by the company and tailored for the GoPro. Yeah. That is the bulk of the new features. What is your take on this? Uh, personally, this excites me a lot because it embraces vloggers like us. Yeah, I think it is building on being a really good action camera. So if you are using the GoPro for action, you're still going to be able to do that uh, just fine without adding all these extra modules. But the fact that they are adding modules and giving you the option to expand the capabilities of using your GoPro, then that's a really great thing in terms of where they're heading. Yes, indeed. But it does come at a cost because the GoPro itself is already $400. Yep. If you are to buy the modules, they're going to come with a premium price for being the GoPro brand and yeah. you're going to end up spending way more than the original $400. Yeah, I mean, I think the media module I read is about $80 US, and I think, you know, like the, the mic adapter, which you no longer need, by the way, in the Hero 8, which is fantastic news, but that already was $50. So it's going up in price just to add the media module, and not even including the light and the you know, display, some of these other the screen, accessories. Yeah. Yep. So it's going to be an expensive camera if you choose to add all those things onto it. That's right. And speaking of that, the extensions are not available until mid-December at least. So until then, we're actually going to stick with our GoPro 7, which we've extended with third-party accessories. And when GoPro releases theirs, we'll be able to try what it is like to vlog with just GoPro native modules. Yep, we'll do lots of comparisons between the two, but on that note as well, I do appreciate that GoPro is embracing vloggers and making a vlogging camera because there's so many other brands that, you know, meet you halfway, but they don't really add all the specs that you need, but this is really becoming a really viable vlogging camera. And it should indeed put an end to the debate whether it is a vlogging camera, which <laughs> exactly. is very common on comments in our videos. Yeah. And now GoPro itself tells you, yes, it is. It tells you it is for vlogging like a pro in their own words. So there you have it. All right, so we are definitely going to buy the Hero 8 when it comes out. Let us know in the comments what you plan to do, if you're going to buy it or not. And we will see you in the next video. All right, see ya.